Okay, I'm sitting outside waiting on my mother. We are going to the powwow now. From what I understand, there's going to be a lot of fun stuff. 90% of it is Indian related. Some of it is just fun because everybody's getting together and having a good time. I'll film as much as I can, show you as much as I can. So let's go. So we brought Rosie and she's having a field, field time out here with these other horses and is loving it. She's got her a boyfriend. I don't know if you guys can see that spotted Appaloosa, but that's her new boyfriend. <laughs> She's having a good old time. These are our neighbors, so she can come over here. And I can just walk her home. <laughs> and these goobers are trying to jump the fence. <laughs> This Cooper already got a crop. <laughs> no problem. It's crazy Mary we're having an issue with. Right. Please don't fall. Arden City, I'll be a car carrier. Or whether you um, just know that you have native in your, or feel that you do, and you want to seek your native name, I think that that's a good course of action. But I think one of the most valuable lessons you can learn after you learn your name is learn how to say your name. So, um, if you learn how to speak your name in your tongue, that's a powerful statement. Uh, then you can pronounce who you are among your people. And not a lot of people can do that. Uh, probably 25% at best of the Chiligi people can speak any functional Chiligi in any language, uh, which to me is sad. Uh, and relatives working on that, uh, both relatives that acknowledge me and relatives that don't acknowledge me anymore due to uh, geopolitical divisions among our people, but uh, that's important. Your name should be part of your spirituality. You should feel it inside. Everybody that hears it should feel it right here. You know, have you ever had, have you ever had that feeling that something just felt so right? You know, everyone was, everybody here been in love, you know, that first time, it's like, boy, that's a woman or a man of your dreams, just, <gasps> You can't live without them, right? Well, it's that feeling. You get that feeling, that name is going to hit you like a brick sledgehammer. It's going to hit you hard, and you're going to know that that's who you are. It fits better than an English name, because no matter how many Lisa's, Angela's, Carol's, Kim's, Bobby's, uh, Ben's, Benji's, there is out there, there will be only one of you. Um, I've very seldomly heard people have the same native names. It's very rare because it's it's there's more diversity in our name than there is in the United Systems. So they are getting fire ready. Um, we're not allowed in the inner circle right now. Uh, we're about to do the naming ceremony. I can't film any of that for you guys, but I will show you or I'll tell you what happens afterward and kind of give you a little rundown on what we did but until they get the fire completely going I mean it's, I know it's hard to see it's like 9 30 at night but I'll tell you what happened when we when we leave morning guys so today is the day after the powwow it's Sunday morning um I just came out here bright and early to feed the animals let everybody out for the day um the powwow was fantastic uh I'll try to make this short and brief because I'm gonna I, I'm gonna have other videos obviously at the beginning of this so I don't want it to be like 20 minutes long. Um, the naming ceremony went fantastic. Um, my mother, uh, who's endured a lot of adversity in her life um, from birth on, uh, she was named. Um, she stands proud. If you knew my mother, you would know how well that fits her, and it was fantastic. Um, as you guys know, I'm crazy about horses. I mean, I have just Rosie only because this is the space. <laughs> this is the space. No better timing could there have been. Um, just because this is the space that I have. And, um, I'm a bright early morning person. Um, and so I was also told I was a fantastic mother. So I'm mother of son and horses. So I think that is a great name for me myself. I personally loved it. Um, I feel like it fits me. 
the naming ceremony is like a very, uh, uh, supposed to be a very spiritual thing. It's supposed to um, be something that would fit you. Typically, you're named by your maternal grandmother, but because my maternal grandmother was not there and my mother's maternal grandmother passed away, she was not able to be named. You also see my aunt, <laughs> the one that was trying to climb the fence and almost fell. We nickname her Crazy Mary because she's crazy, but her real name is Angie, and um, she was named Butterfly Wind, and you'd have to know she's very free spirit. She's got a butterfly tattoo. Like, it, ju it, it just suited her. But the cool thing was, is Mara got to come down. And Mara, um, obviously, my mom is there. She's her maternal grandmother. And both in Cherokee and Blackfoot, it is your maternal grandmother that names you. So my mother named Mara Shining Star, and it fit her. Now, there was one girl. She got the name. Uh, she paints the stars. And I was like, oh, that is, like, the best name ever. Like, I want a name like that. But I love my name. I just thought hers was like super cool. Um, so the powwow went great. We had a great time. We didn't get home and back in the house until like midnight to say. Um, <clears throat> but this will be kind of uh, the afternoon chat with the powwow stuff. And I wanted to kind of give you a little heads up about what might be happening. Um, this morning, I did put Rosie up for sale on Facebook. Um not for the reasons that I had talked about, about worrying about her. Um, I had been praying about it and I kind of asked God, you know, show me what should I do? Like, should I keep her? Am I being fair to her? Just tell me what to do. Everybody had such sweet comments. Everybody was very helpful telling me, don't worry about it. You know, just give her some love. Yes, you know, it might be hard on the land, but I'm going to fence in more area. No big deal. Yesterday, <clears throat> we were informed that we are going to have a, quite an issue, actually. One of, one of our neighbors um, decided to send us a letter saying that the original homeowners signed something saying that we could not own livestock. Now, I actually am going to have to go to the courthouse and go through all this big rigmarole to find out if our land is actually restricted when we purchased it. Our purchase agreement, um, all the stuff that we signed said no zoning unrestricted, period. But apparently, this nosy old woman who I don't fit in her box that says you're, you know, you are supposed to work your nine to five and have your little manicured yard and your little Bichon dog. <clears throat> apparently, because I don't fit in her little box, sorry, I'm so hoarse from yesterday. <clears throat> Because I don't fit in that box, <clears throat> she's decided to cause me problems. Now, <clears throat> four of my six neighbors, one I have not spoke to about it. We just don't talk. They don't seem to have an issue. The rest love it. They're fine with it. They're great with it. They don't have any issues. But this one neighbor has an issue. And apparently, from what I understand from some of the other neighbors, this may never have even been notarized and filed in the courts. So it may not even be anything. Um, another one told me, this is not an HOA. You didn't sign anything. Um, and really the only way she can make you get rid of your animals is to hire an attorney and spend four or $5,000 and hope that the judge will see her side of it. It's just, I don't know. I have this little squared off space in my yard toward the back far corner, not near the road, not near anybody. My roosters are just now learning to crow. They don't even do it that loud. I have several other neighbors around us that are farmers and have roosters and a lot of them turkeys. I'm not hurting anyone and I don't understand. I think that's my hardest thing is I don't understand why my little plot out here with my little farm animals and my garden is such an issue to someone who lives across the street way up on top of a hill far away from it it's not like there's a smell it's not like she and not only that across the street is a farmer behind her is a farmer across from me is a farm there's farms everywhere and we're talking like cattle and chickens and horses like tons of stuff mine is just a little but she apparently has a problem with me so, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what's going to happen. But, um, I'm a little agitated. I cried a lot yesterday. 
because we don't have a lot of money. So we put what money we did have into making this a reality for me. And for somebody who doesn't speak to me, who doesn't have anything to do with my life, who literally lives on the other side of the road, who I never bother. Like, it's not like my chickens even free range. My chickens don't free range. They do not get out of their pen. Nothing is coming out of my yard. There's zero reason to have an issue with it, but apparently she does. So, to think that that could possibly be taken away from me, <sighs> can't even tell you how that, how that feels, honestly. So, I'll keep you guys updated on that. I will uh, try not to cry next time I talk about it. But I'll keep you guys updated. I'll let you know what happens. I will not take this lightly. The reason that I decided to put Rosie up for sale is the stuff really didn't start until her. I'm about to get the goats. The goats actually um, will profit the homestead. The chickens profit the homestead. The horse does not. Uh, if something happens and uh, I do not sell her, the neighbors next door who have like five or six horses um, and cattle and they have like 20 acres um, have offered to allow me to leave Rosie there. So she would be with other animals, which she's already made a boyfriend. You all seen in the first doc. She's in love with him. He's in love with her. Like they were just like instantly like this. So, um, you know, if something happens and I don't sell her, I will keep her and she will end up going to, um, she will end up going to his house to live just to kind of maybe shut the neighbor up. Uh, I will not get rid of my chickens and I will not get rid of the goats. And if I have to go before a judge, I will inform them that I, I'm doing this to make money. This is part of my income. This is part of my livelihood. This is, this is how I take care of myself and I'm not getting rid of it unless they give me a court order that says you have so many days to get rid of your animals. She can suck my toe. That's just all there is to it. I'm not getting, giving them up. Um, the horse, the only reason is between that stuff going on with her and the fact that I was already concerned anyway, it just kind of, I kind of almost feel like that's God's answer because out of all this time that I've had all these animals, this is, this is right at June. We're right at June. I've had everything since February and she's never said a word up until I got the pony. Now it's a concern. So I'm hoping this will shut her up. Number one. Um, and number two, I feel like it's best for Rosie. I will tell you guys, for those of you who are worried about, you know, what would happen to her, you know, or who would take her. Um, I did ask for probably more than she's worth. Because if somebody's serious about taking care of her or they're serious about horses, like, I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, 100 bucks, you can take her. Kind of like the lady did to me. She don't know me from Adam. She didn't know what I was going to do with that horse. So, you know, I'm not, I'm definitely not doing anything like that. Um, and I'm going to be very, very particular. I'm not in a hurry. Very particular about who I sell her to. And, you know, if she doesn't sell, like I said, I'm sending her next door to the neighbors. Um, just for her own safety. Because I'm almost afraid that this lady's going to do something stupid. And I would hate to have to kill her. <laughs> I would hate to have to hurt the woman. But, um, you know, m my chickens, they don't hurt anybody. They're not getting out of my fence. Um, the goats are going to be a profit. I could not argue with a judge and say that I'm making a profit with the pony. I, I just can't. Um, and technically, I would say that if he... If I had to show pictures of the property, even he would say, you know, you don't even have enough space for this horse. And he would be right. So, in the mindset of I have to do what's best for us, this is what's got to happen. So, that will be all I, I talked to you about today. Because um, I'm not going to get upset again. I've cried enough. Um... But that's, I just want to let you guys know what was going to happen. Uh, so if something happens and you see that I've sold Rosie or, you know, that she is living with the neighbors, you will understand the why. 
and that it's not just something I'm doing because of what of whatever blue is up here. Turn it and see if you can see him. He's come to inspect. He wants to know what I'm doing. Are you looking at yourself? <laughs> so anyway, now that I'm done doing that, I love you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Great next rest of the week. Um, I, I'm going to go get the baby goats Friday. Um, I'll let you know what happens with Rosie. Please be praying for me because I'm really stressed about this. I don't want to end up having to lose everything I've worked for because of one nosy person. Love you. See you later. Bye.